Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this Blitz Chess postmortem, a postmortem of my Blitz game number 492. My opponents started off with e4 and I tried out the uh, Scandinavian or center counter defense with uh, d5. He takes, which is the main move, and um, I play knight f6, which is not the main move. Normally, uh, or the top choice here is queen takes d5, but I think this is a respectable and interesting way to play with knight f6, rounding up the pawn with the knight. And then um, if he defends the pawn like he did, uh, you immediately undermine it with c6. So you're threatening to take here. If he takes, uh, you take back with the knight. And actually, it's quite a good gambit because you have uh, control of the dark squares here. He never really gets in the move um, d4. So um, uh, interesting way for uh, interesting way for uh, black to play. Uh, he decides to uh, not go for the gambit, but uh, play knight c3. And now I just get my pawn back. And not only do I get my pawn back, but, um, oh, I should point out that d4 is a move here to transpose into a, uh, a uh, what is it called? It's the uh, Panov Botvinnik attack against the Karo Khan. That's another interesting way to play for white. But uh, the way white played it here, he just uh, takes the pawn off. And so, so I got my pawn back, and I have an open center. And uh, white has a bit of an awkward pawn structure, but with his isolated pawn. But white should be okay. Um, it's not a problem here, really. Uh, knight f3 is the main move. Um, so anyway, we're out of the opening book after this next move. My opponent plays bishop b5 check, an interesting move. Uh, and uh, I, I blocked it with the knight, which is okay. Uh, but afterwards I was thinking uh, maybe I should have considered blocking with the bishop. So I didn't play this, but this is an interesting line. I mean, I didn't play it because the bishop blocks the knight, so it looks at first like my knight is hanging. Uh, but his bishop is under a threat too, so if he takes my knight... I take his bishop, and that actually uh, works out well for me. I gain a tempo on the knight. Um, let's see, he could try a4, kicking my bishop, or he could retreat the knight. But overall, uh, I have a good position here. So bishop d7 would have been an interesting way to play it. In fact, his best move is not to take the knight, but to uh, uh, play queen b3. That's interesting. Hitting the, uh, hitting the knight again, defending his bishop, so this knight is really hanging. And then I have to play something like uh, e6 with about an even game. So that's okay. Um, but knight c6, which I played, is also all right. Also with a, about an even game. And he piles up on this uh, pin knight here. And uh, even though this is uh, technically okay, it's a bit uh, awkward to play. This knight is uh, hanging. It's under threat. <clears throat> it's not hanging right now, but it's hanging in many lines. It's under threat from uh, his knight. And, uh, and, of course, there's this threat to take twice on c6 and have this check that forks the king and the rook, which uh, can be defended with bishop d7, but that's uh, one of those lines that leaves the knight hanging. So I have to be a little careful. Um, retreating the knight back to b6 is a way to play this, just get the knight to a safe place. Um, or defending the knight with e6, it looks like that's the top engine choice. This actually gives up a pawn, because he can take here and uh, then take with the queen. Yeah, maybe this isn't so good. Maybe his queen has no good squares. Now, in this line, my knight is defended. His queen is under attack, and uh, queen drops back to c4. It looks like, uh, that's kind of funny. Look at this evaluation. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm a pawn down, <clears throat> but I have, well, I guess I have a tremendous lead in development, and maybe I can gain some more tempos on his queen, and uh, his structure looks a bit awkward here, whereas I have all these open lines for my bishops. So, so I guess I have uh, more, way more than enough compensation for the pawn. Interesting. So just e6 there would have been the way to play it. Okay, I played this move, uh, knight takes. It gets my knight out of trouble and hits the queen. Uh, but the problem is he can take here with check. And uh, after I take back, it's another check. Yeah, the engine doesn't like that. That's what he played. What What is the engine liking here? Just d takes c3, taking, taking the knight with a pawn and repairing white's pawn structure rather than grabbing a pawn. But this, this wins a pawn for, um, <clears throat> this wins a pawn for uh, white. It's with check. And then he gets the knight back this way. So, uh, but even though I am uh, down a pawn, this is one of those situations where I have more than enough compensation. My, my opponent's only piece developed is the queen. <laughs> and uh, whereas I have uh, open lines, I have the bishop pair, I'm in great shape here. Uh, so, 
being down a pawn is nothing to be afraid of. It's actually my next move. I mentioned that I blundered a pawn here. That's that wasn't it. This is this is the pawn blunder. I just played the move e5, and he can take it with check, and so it swings. So the that first loss of a pawn is fine, and I'm I'm actually in good shape here. But giving up a second pawn for for nothing at all is uh, is no good. <laughs> so anyway, so he has the edge here, but somehow <clears throat> I managed to uh, stay in the game here and block the check. Plays yeah maybe because he doesn't play the most active moves here. These moves like h3 and not doing a whole lot here. See already his advantage goes down, so it's uh, time for White to play actively. Uh, get the knight out, get the bishop out. You know, the d pawn should be coming forward. Is there a problem with playing d4 immediately? Suppose he played this move. Uh, bishop b4 check. This bishop, bishop b4 check. King f1. Why can't he block? Bishop b4 check. I was kind of curious. Bishop here. Bishop takes d2. King takes d2. Yeah, I guess it's a bit awkward. It displaces his king. Hmm. Okay, so pushing the d-pawn right away isn't isn't the right idea, but developing the knight, getting the knight out and castling, and then maybe pushing that pawn and developing the bishop, that would be a way for white to play. Okay, this move h3 is not, not doing a whole lot. <coughs> and it's moves like this that allow me to uh, stay in the game. I go uh, queen to d7 here. Um, let's see. Yeah, I was defending the bishop and thinking of playing f6 to chase his queen away, which is kind of an annoying piece. The problem is his queen is looking at the uh, the g-pawn here, and that keeps me from developing my uh, dark-squared bishop. So um, so if I can get in the move f6, chase his queen away, then I'll be able to get this bishop out of the way and castle kingside. So I'm working towards that by defending the bishop with queen d7. He plays knight f3. I go f6, kicking the queen. Queen drops back to e4. And um, let's see, I went uh, rook d8 here. <clears throat> Not sure why I didn't just develop the bishop immediately. He castles, and now I go bishop c5. So I'm getting to the position I wanted, but I'm still down a pawn here, and uh, d4 is a good move. He prepares it with uh, rook d1, but actually that's, yeah, so it's this move here that uh, gives me some hope, I guess. It's the immediate d4 kicking the bishop back to uh, to b6 would be good, it looks like. When he plays this move, um, this knight, I mean this rook on uh, d1 is actually not defended, so I, I can kind of ignore this uh, pawn to d4 threat. I castle, he plays d4, and now um, I have this pin on the pawn, so he can't actually take the bishop, so I can develop another piece. And now um, you see I have, uh, I'm still uh, two pawns down, right? Yeah, I'm still two pawns down, but now it's looking like I have uh, some compensation for them. Anyway, he drops his queen back to c2, kicking my bishop, and I drop back. And then he plays bishop to e3, defending his pawn structure. I go queen to d6. I'm just trying to line up for some kind of kingside attack here. Bishop to uh, bishop c7, queen d6, and uh, <laughs> the mate on uh, h2. Why not? He played uh, a3 here, so that's that's another move that's not really to the point. Well, maybe he wants to play b4. Gain a little space, so maybe not too bad. I go bishop to d5. I want to stop his pawn from advancing and uh, be in a position to trade off this defensive knight. He goes uh, queen to e2. And I go bishop c7. So now I've got everything kind of lined up here. Still, um, you know, white has two pawns, and he should be able to defend this position. But it's interesting how much uh, white's advantage has dropped. Instead of being plus two, it's it's just up a fraction. Um, he plays g3 here to stop the uh, the mate threat. Let's see. So let's back up one move and see what he could have played here. King f1, rook e1. Rook A to C1. Rook A to C1 makes sense to me. I mean, am I really threatening to take the knight? Take with the queen. I get a check. King here. I get another check. But his queen is defending the uh, the G2 pawn. So it looks like the attack is not, not really breaking through. So he could uh, safely ignore the attack for a little bit and just play a nice developing move like Rook A to C1. Interesting. Anyway, so he played this uh, defensive move g3, which is sort of what you're hoping for when you set up these attacks. Uh, your opponent will start making some weakening moves. 
And now, um, well, I line up, uh, since his, uh, his knight is no longer defended, I line up with an attack on the knight. Um, he plays king to g2 to hold on to things, but then also pins the knight and gives me some, some ideas here. I start pushing on with my pawns, f5. It was rook a to c1, getting his other rook out. My queen can stay on this diagonal and hold on to the bishops. Um, the queen is maybe in, um, a bit overworked here, but this bishop is not under attack, so... So it looks like it's okay still. He <clears throat> tries to activate his rooks on the C file. You see already, though, he's in trouble. Yeah, the combination of uh, weakening his king side and not playing the most active moves has, has given me some kind of advantage here. Okay, so he goes rook to C3, and now I play F4. It looks like bishop D6 is already breaking through. I don't understand why bishop D6 is such a good move. What am I doing there? Bishop to d6, rook to g1. Let's just see if we can figure out what the threat is here. And then, then f4. Oh, maybe the idea with bishop to d6 is just to move it away from uh, any ideas of rook takes bishop. Because I played f4 immediately instead of preceding it with uh, bishop d6. So maybe uh, maybe there's a defensive idea. Yeah, there's a defensive idea for white just to uh, give up the exchange here but uh, break down this strong dark squared bishop. Okay, so he didn't play that way. He took. I take with the bishop. Taking advantage of this uh, pin. I've got a pin on his bishop there. Um, he plays rook d to c1, lining up on the c file and maybe coming into the c7 square, but I've still got that under control at the moment. I play uh, queen to b6. Oh yeah, I'm just trying to uh, prepare uh, and advance over to the uh, king side. Um, it looks like rook to e6 is another move which is good. Uh, with the same idea, bring the rook up and over and just start delivering checks along the open g file, but queen b6 keeps the advantage. Queen to d2, unpinning and threatening to trade off this bishop. I can deliver the check first, so I do that. His king runs to uh, f1, and then I just take his knight because the knight has been left undefended after the king is checked away. And uh, he resigned here. There's actually a mate in 12. Um, you know, the, the, threat, the threat of queen to g2 check and queen to g1 mate is pretty strong here. But he can just get his queen out of the way. Um, he just needs a square. <clears throat> Say, for example, he plays... Uh, Queen over to c2. Then I can then I can deliver this check. He can run here. I can check here. The king has an escape here. But there's still going to be a mate in the a mate in six. Ah, this is a nice trick. And that's why I wanted to continue on. It's uh, there's this pin on the bishop, so I can actually take that pawn that appears to be defended and uh, just crash through this way. So anyway, there's an overwhelming attack here. So my opponent. Uh, he resigned at this point, probably because he couldn't couldn't find a good defense. And uh, you can see the chess engine agrees there was no way to defend that. Anyway, that, that's it for uh, this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave any comments you have in the section below, and I will see you again soon. Bye.